Welcome to this video lecture. We are continuing to talk about optimization with Python and SciPy. Specifically, we're going to be talking about a constrained optimization and how you deal with those physical constraints on your system. So just as a reminder, uh, we have our objective function that we're trying to minimize. We have our decision variables arranged into a vector here. And then uh, here we have what our model or our system is subject to. So it's subject to upper and lower bounds on our decision variables. So these would also be uh, vectors here. Um, we have equality constraints and we have inequality constraints. Specifically, the optimization problem that we're going to be solving is to minimize this objective function. This is the same one we used in the last video. Um, the same objective function, the same decision variables, the same uh, lower bounds and upper bounds on our two decision variables, x0 and x1. But then we're going to have this constraint, and this constraint says that x1 is greater than or equal to 4 plus 0 0.5 times x0. Uh, so this is an inequality constraint, and if we go back and look here, we need to arrange our inequality constraint so that we have everything in a function on the left-hand side, and so that everything on that left-hand side must be greater than or equal to zero. So if we take our constraint in this format, we need to rearrange it so that uh, h, we need to arrange it so that everything on the left-hand side is greater than or equal to zero, which means we would take this function and uh, move everything over to the left-hand side. So we subtract uh, 0 0.5 times x0 and we subtract four. That gives us our uh, constraint and that means this function h is x1 minus a half times x0 minus 4. This is, again, a, a fairly simple two-dimensional uh, optimization problem. We just have these two decision variables. So here we're plotting x0 on the x-axis and x1 on the y-axis. And this is what our constraint looks like. Uh, so we've, we've drawn that line. Um, and remember our constraint is we have to be greater than or equal to that line. So that means uh, everything in this range becomes infeasible. So no solution can be found here. So previously when we were dealing with unconstrained optimization, our optimum was here. Now we're dealing with constrained optimization, so we would probably expect our, optimi our optimum to be somewhere here on where I've just drawn that line. All right, so we're going to go back to our Jupyter Notebook, where we formulated this optimization problem very similar to before. Uh, we have, we import this minimize function from SciPy. Here we define this vector of our decision variable. So first we define our objective function. We say this is a function, it's a function of this vector x. And then with these commands, we're just, we're saying that x0 is just this first element, or the, rather this zero element of the x vector, and then x1 is just the first element. Now we can define our objective function. So this is a little function that we are defining um, that you give it a certain value for x0 and x1, and this function's job is to return the value of your objective function. So here we are assuming this is an empirical model representing cost of our system or something like that that we are trying to minimize. So our objective function is 0 0.4 times x0 squared minus 5 times x0 plus x1 squared minus 6x1. So this is all the same that we did in our unconstrained example. Now we've defined this objective function. We need to define another function which represents one of our, which represents our constraint. So here we define this other function. It's also a function of x. And here we, we break it out again. We just say uh, these are the two scalars, and this is where they fit into, into the x vector. Now we define that h function here, and we tell this constraints function, if I give you x, or if I give you values for uh, x0 and x1, compute the value of this constraint, and then return h. So going down further, we define those same bounds as we did in our other example, and this an initial guess as we did before. Now we need to tell uh, our optimizer what type of constraints these are. And so we use this line. These constraints are, their type is their inequality constraints, and this function is just called uh, constraints. So that is the name of our function up here. 
All right, then we compile this all. We've defined our objective function. We've defined our initial guess, our bounds. Um, this In here, we also define our methods. So here we're saying, give me an optimal solution that is the result of minimizing our objective function, starting with this initial guess where x0 equals 0 and x1 equals 0. We're going to use this method called SLSQP. This is, uh, this is just a method that's telling the optimizer how to iterate uh, based on the gradient that it's encountering at each step along the way. We Here we tell it, use those bounds that we've previously defined and use this constraints function that we have previously defined. And then at the end, we're going to print out this optimum, uh, this OPT object, which is contains a bunch of information about our optimal solution. So if I go here now and just uh, run this cell, so this spits out the value of our objective function at the optimal solution. Um, it tells us something about like the number of iterations. This tells us this message optimization terminated successfully. Success equals true. And now down here, this x is important. This is telling us the optimum values of x0 here, which is 3.08, and uh, x1, which is 5.4. I am now going to replot our objective function and that constraint line, but I'm going to add to it a plot of our optimal solution, and we'll just see if, the, if it did find the optimum that we found visually. So we run that, we see our objective function plotted out all over the space, we see our constraint, and remember, everything below this line is infeasible. So while there are better values of the objective function here, we can't achieve those because we need to find a solution that is within the feasible space. So everything above this line is feasible, and we did find that optimum here at, again, that was the point, uh, 3.08 and then 5.54. So here, yeah, we're looking right about there. So. This is how you solve an optimization problem that has constraints.